What up, players? It's War Boss Tay up in this mode. Just finished this spooky Toberfest 2013 entry. It is Scrag the Slaughterer. After realizing that I do not have the required bits to make the flying hive tyrant that I would like with twin link devourers, and I do not want to go out and buy more bits, I'm just going to put that on the shelf. I decided to do this instead. So it is a Scrag the Slaughterer model. It's an old, uh, it's a metal model. They redid it in fine cast, but it is for the Ogre Kingdom's range. A lot of blood and gore and uh, goodness right there. So I'm gonna do a little time lapse video now to show you how I did it. Uh, please stay tuned if you want to hear how I went through all the steps. It's not gonna be a full tutorial because um, this is not a common model. But uh, for those of you who do have this model or have been thinking about painting it up, I go through all of the colors that you need and, um, and through my trials and tribulations through painting it. Uh, definitely want to get some Tamiya Clear Red if you are going to be doing the bloody effects and why wouldn't you? It is awesome. So thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Happy Halloween. Happy Spooky Toberfest. Thank you everybody who participated and um, look forward to hearing all your comments and uh, for checking out all of your Spooky Toberfest entries. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Nom 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 nom. All right, so we're be beginning. I decided after priming my model with a Duplicolor Matte Gray to uh, paint the blood. And so I'm using corn red. And uh, after that, painting all the blood in the cauldron, I'm using Warplock Bronze to paint the cauldron itself underneath the chains. And a good alternative could be tin bits if you've got the old tin bits. Or just take some, some gold color and uh, add some black to darken it up to this really uh, dark looking bronze-ish color. And after that, I decided to paint the the other steel plates, the other plates on this guy. Um, but later on, I change it. Next, I figured what's a great surface area to paint is all the skin on our scrag. So I'm using Bugman's Glow here, watering it down, doing a couple of layers. Uh, I found that doing just one layer isn't nearly enough. So you want to uh, thin it down in your wet palette, do the first layer, and then paint the second one on. And uh, because it's the lowest layer, it, it really is a good idea to do this one first before you do any of the clothes or the metal or anything. Now I think that's, I believe it's Celestia Gray and I'm painting the apron. I decided to try and make this guy look like a chef. So he's wearing like a white apron, the straps, strips of cloth on his back are white as well. And uh, Celestia Gray is a great base color to build up on. I also decided to do the fur trim on his boots in Celestia Gray. Uh, to kind of tie in just because we're going to make them look nice and bright and white uh, even though they're not going to be clean they're going to be like a really dirty white celestial gray form is a good idea next we're going with Mornfang Brown to paint the rust so with rusted metal one of the greatest uh, articles that I've seen on it in White Dwarf back when the Ogre Kingdoms was really really popular showed the painters doing a lot of the the metal in Mornfang Brown. Mornfang Brown is also what we use as the base color for our base here to build up to a nice sandy color. So we're, we're using that on the base, but yeah, they said just paint any kind of silver metal in in this rust brown or in this Mornfang Brown to, to indicate rust. So that's what I decided to do just as an experiment and I really like it. Hello. Yes. lady boss calling um yeah she's like what do we do for halloween i don't know i need to do this spooky toba fest videos so we're gonna go out and try and find some something to do tomorrow night uh crash some parties or something so lead belcher i decided to use lead belcher for parts that i thought wouldn't be rusted or uh, parts that he would actually take care to clean so of course his cauldron with the, the teeth, the silver teeth on it would be nice and clean, so I decided to do that in Lead Belcher. Also cleaning the insides of all these little teeth things, plus the little hooks and the pot cover on his knoblar there. Uh, anything that wouldn't have been strapped to his body for any amount of time and gotten all rusty. 
Wa Flesh. So I started on the Noblar and I've decided to keep going. Wa Flesh is a great base color for any green skin, be they Goblin, Noblar, Gretchen, Orc with a C or a K. Uh, not a Tolkien Orc though, for some reason those are like brown. Who knows why? Love these Noblar figures. They look so cartoony with their floppy ears and their, their big goofy noses. And uh, most of the color schemes you see with them make the noses uh, kind of flesh colored to kind of make them seem really interesting and different from cartoony goblins. And I'm using Eshin Gray for the boots, the leather of the boots, and I'm using Dark Reaper, which I also use as a base coat for my Death Core of Krieg. I decided to paint that on the pants. I, th I thought that that was a nice cool color, and by cool I mean it's not that uh, distracting. So. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm really happy with, with the Dark Reaper. I might paint more pants of my ogres in Dark Reaper because it's it uh, doesn't take the focus away from the skin tone, doesn't compete for this for brightness with the skin tone. So that's Steel Legion Drab that I'm using as a dry brush for the base and for any wood. So the wood of the bucket, the wood of the uh, this Noblar's little drumstick, and the wood of the Noblar on the back, his little stirring stick. Got Steel Legion Drab. Steel Legion Drab is also what I'm going to use for their hats later, or their hoods. Eshin Gray for this guy's clothes. <clears throat> and that looked like Xandri Dust for the fur trim for the Noblars. Yeah, Waikiki gets pretty crazy on Halloween. I don't know if we're going to walk around there. That's where all the crazy people go out, tourists and everybody. Death World Forest. So this is going to be the highlight color for the skin of the Noblars. It's a real pea green, pukey, kind of yellowish green color and it's a perfect mid-tone for our little Noblar guys before we shade them. If you wanted them to look more like uh, goblins, like night goblins or or uh, regular forest goblins or goblins, then um, I would suggest going up to Skarsnik Green. Less yellow, more of a lighter take on the green, and uh, it doesn't it, it gives it that very distinctive goblin green color. Okay, what do I look for next? Dryad Bark. So this is going to be the final color for the bottom of the boots as well as the little little footsies on our Nabla guys. Doombo Brown is going to be this guy's tunic. I, I decided to, I didn't want to go like with a bright red. Um, I didn't want to go with bright colors for my Noblars uh, because I don't think it should distract from the rest of the model. So Doombo Brown is a nice dark rusty red. Doing up some details now in Mornfang Brown, like the belt. Celestia Gray for more of the apron and these. I think I get the strips of cloth. Yeah, on his back. It's like his old uh, undershirt or something. I wanted to write "Kiss the Chef" on the front of the apron, but yeah, I decided that'd probably be silly. Steel Legion Drab for the hoods now. My little Noblar, their little hoodies. And I think I painted a little sponge and gave them like dinge there. Rackard Flesh is going to be for the little foot wraps. I also use Rackard Flesh for the Noblar's um, bracelets and any foot wraps they have. Yep, Rackard Flesh for any bones, so the skulls, uh, Scrag's teeth, Doombo Brown for the rack of ribs hanging from his belt and what did I just do? Going back to Steel Leech and Drab I guess for the hood. Lead Belcher painting the sword on the base. Rack Eye Flesh again for the little top of the drum or whatever that stick is he's got in the back. And finding some more iron that I, I missed. 
So I'm just painting more in Fang Brown on belts, straps, chain mail, whatnot. Rack our flesh back on the leg wraps. Yeah, I was just kind of making this all up as I went along. Rack our flesh on the the wristbands. I didn't really care for the uh, Games Workshop heavy metal version of this guy. So I used Lead Belcher to pick out the details on the pot. And now I'm using Skaven Blight Dinge to paint his little, his little patch of hair on the top of his head. Yeah, but you've got like a, a comet, some mountains uh, on its cauldron that will benefit from being a different color than the dark uh, bronze metal. Some more more Fang Brown for all the rings on his face, in his ear, uh, on his forehead, under his chin. Gross. Some lead belcher for the little staples on his chest. Sandry dust. I did Sandry dust for the ropes, and I think my video cut because I lost. Uh, I, I ran out. So Sandry dust for the ropes uh, on his wrists. Now I'm doing Bugman's glow for the skin-colored things in his pot. His yummy bits. Oh, a Kalidor Sky is going to be the shield. Uh, something that I didn't do after I painted the middle part white is I did not uh, paint the the inner part of the cross red. I guess it's supposed to be an Altdorf shield, blue and red, um, but I, I missed that, so I'll have to do that later. I'm just cleaning up Rackarth Flesh as a final dry brush for the base. Skaven Blight Dinge is going to be the color of all the rocks there. So it's cool that that Games Workshop did a sculpted base for this for this guy. I'm not sure how often they've done that for their older model range, um, but I, th I think it's really good in this case. Uh, you've got some heads on the base, so I painted those in Bugman's Glow. Taking some Rackarth flesh now and doing the bones on the ribs hanging from his his waist. And now this is a part that's going to take a little a little bit of time because it's the lightening up of the skin. So over Bugman's Glow we're doing Cadian Flesh Tone and uh, you can't really see it because of the sped of video but it's, it is pretty hard to work with. This is a, a color that is very finicky. You can see the mold line right down his arm there. And the reason why is because if you put too much on your brush then it clumps on the sides when you put it on and then it, it gets really hard to conceal the brush strokes. If you put too little bit on your brush then it spreads too thinly and then again you the, you, you see the brush strokes really easily. So there's a there's a trick to using Cadian Flesh Tone that I found is that you always paint it over a base coat of Bugman's Glow and then thin it down on your wet palette and then use light short feather brush strokes. And that way you can make sure that you have good smooth even coverage and that it doesn't clump and it doesn't look too thick in any area. It's okay if you go over all of your Bugman's Glow. The Bugman's Glow is just really there so that the um, Cadian Flesh Tone doesn't go over the, the primer, the base coat, or the undercoat rather. Um, but what I'm trying to do is keep some of that Bugman's Glow in the shadows so that it, it creates a little bit of a, a depth to it. But yeah, Cadian Flesh Tone, tough color to work with. It's nothing like the old Talarn Flesh. That stuff was... That stuff was really good. At this point, I decided to take some Zandri dust and paint more of the hair on this skull there. I'm gonna take White Scar now and color in the detail of the shield. Cadian Flesh Tone again to highlight the the fleshy colored parts in the, in the soup pot. Ooh, Mephiston red, and that's going to highlight up the blood in the soup pot. Tomato soup. Campbell's. 
I think I, this is serious purple. It's serious, you guys. It's really serious. That's gonna create a nice looking intestine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, some more Cadian flesh tone for the heads. Now I'm gonna mix pallid witch flesh and Cadian flesh tone, and this is going to be our highlight color. So I, I tested it out on on the body parts in this in the soup bowl, on the heads down here, and I liked it. So I decided to continue using it to highlight up Scrag. And as I told you before, you want to go with the direction of the the mus the muscles. So for the arm, the forearm going down to the weapon, I'm painting in horizontal strokes that lead it down for his double chin, for his face, I'm trying to do vertical strokes, uh, the rings around his neck, down here by his chest and his gut, I'm just trying to follow the the, the weight of, the, of gravity pulling the muscles in whatever direction they're going. And when you do that, you hide your, you hide any mistakes. You know, it's more pleasing to the eye and it gives an overall really nice effect. Ooh, no idea what that was. What was that? Lead Belcher. So yeah, now I'm kind of dry brushing Lead Belcher on the chains and just to kind of show where, you know, when something is really rusted, the more wear and tear you give it, the more that rust kind of scrapes away. Now I'm taking Wild Rider Red, <sighs> and I'm, oh, excuse me, I'm uh, splotching on patches of orange rust onto everything. And then that I decided, oh, I should really do it over the chains too. So I went back and splotched it over all the chains, the silver chains. And then I decided the only thing to do now, after uh, cleaning up all this, all the uh, orange splotches that got on the skin by accident is to, I think, start with the washes. Is that right? Yeah, I think I made a bunch of little little mistakes that I wanted to clean up now before the wash phase. Every time, Anytime you do a mistake in the foundation phase or the base coat phase like I'm doing, I always try to clean it up before you get to the shades, because then it's harder. Agrax Earthshade is the first thing. Now, when you have a model that has rust on it, the um, orange kind of rusty pigment, oxidized rusty metal, I found that Agrax Earthshade, that dark brown, really pulls the orange into the brown. So I'm just kind of splashing it everywhere right now to tie down that, that Wild Rider red. And then I'm putting it all over my knoblars, make them all dirty, nice and dirty. And getting it on the pants, on the boots, all over the arms. all over the chains, using a smaller brush, putting it in the mouth. Non oil is the next one and that is going on the apron as well as the cloth on the shoulders and where else am I putting it? I think that was it. Alright, Raikland Flesh Shade. This is going onto the skin areas. So first I started with the guys in the pot, and then I went on to Scrag himself. Got a little bit overzealous with it. My Raikland Flesh Shade, I'm, I'm kind of running out, so I, uh, I, I think when it gets down to the bottom, it gets like a little thicker. I popped open the top and it, it looked really soupy, so I shook it up. I didn't add any water to it, maybe I need to do that, but um, I'm, I'm putting it on so you can see it, it gives a nice, I guess, tan look to the flesh. It doesn't make it look as pale. I decided to wait a little while and then I came back with Drew Kai Violet which is this beautiful purple and now I'm adding some bruising to Scrag. So I painted it in the, in the, in the lines, in the folds of his muscles, anywhere where his muscles are stretched because of the piercings that he's got. I want to show that bruised skin unhealthy skin so um, when you put it in the shadows and the creases of his muscles as well it shows very it, it kind of comes off as being very unhealthy I also lined his scars with them his healing scars and tried to put as much of that purple as I could around any bolted on pieces pieces of metal or uh, where his where his hands were cut off 
anything like that. It creates a really nice and disgusting look to it. Yes. Okay. So now I'm using Administratum Grey to highlight up the apron after the Null Oil shade. And then I'm using White Scar, and looking back, White Scar is probably too too bright, unless I could have mixed it with the Administratum Grey. It was a little too bright, and uh, a good alternate color I could have went with was Ultuan Grey. I didn't have it with me for some reason, I couldn't find it, so I just went with White Scar. But yeah, the more I painted with it, the more I realized uh, it's a little bit too too much of a contrast. Like White Scar would have been a nice final highlight, but I'm using it as a as a uh, as a as, like as a as a whole color instead of just a very fine line highlight, and uh, I think it kind of ruined the the look of it. I'm just going for like a subtle subtle highlight with the whites and yeah white scar after administrating gray is just a little bit too much so now I'm mixing um, I think it was a death world forest with nurgling green and that is the highlight for the knoblars and after washing their skin with agrax earthshade I gotta say this is a really nice color because the death world forest was a little bit too yellow Um, yeah, but with Nurgling Green mixed in, it looks really good. And you add a little bit of Cadian Flesh Tone to that mix. So you've got Nurgling Green, Death World Forest, and Cadian Flesh Tone. And you use that on the edge of the Noblar's noses. And it just, it makes them look really cool, look really great. So now I'm doing Cadian Flesh Tone on our ogre here. And... And we're just building over the highlights that we did before. Um, taking our Dark Reaper now and highlighting back up the pants. Especially if you've got watermarks from where the uh, you put a little bit too much shade in, it's really nice to clean that up. We're also doing Xandri Dust on all the hair of the, the uh, zombie heads that are there. as well as highlighting up the fur trim on our knoblars. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a little bit of Chaos Black and I think this is where I just kind of painted in his little beady eyes. Decided not to do too much with that just because uh, his eyes are just so small. Doing a little bit more. Uh, there are some chains, rings I found with Morn Fang Brown. All right, this is the good stuff. Tamiya Clear Red added to, uh, I'm making a whole new wet palette with some water, dirty paint water, a little bit of parchment paper, and black and brown paint. So there's my Chaos Black, add in a little bit of Dryad Bark, and to me a clear red. So I'm making my Dark Blood, my Medium Color Blood, and then my Light Blood, just to me a clear red. I started with that, and went into the the pot there, the food pot, added in some of the dark color and thought it was a little bit too dark so I cleaned it up and left more of that lighter red color at the top there. And then I just went crazy, blood blood blood, everywhere, all over the place, under the pot, on the chains like it was spilling out while he's dragging it, um, behind it, streaking behind it like he's dragging it along the ground and it's just spilling all over the place. It's, uh, it was one of the times when I really had a lot of fun with the Tamiya Clear Red and just added it everywhere to everything. Sometimes you want to be careful because less can be much, much more effective. But in, in this situation, I mean, he's carrying a cauldron full of blood and body parts and his hands have been replaced by rusty weapons. He's got the severed heads all over the ground. I mean, come on, what are you gonna do? Then I, I added some at the end on his apron. Nom nom nom. Scrag is happy, and there it is. Yeah, I think at the end, after putting it all over his weapons, I decided, oh, you know, we'll, we'll put some uh, under his, like, 
anywhere where there's piercings, anywhere where, oh yeah, he's an ogre slaughtermaster, so he'll be eating all this stuff, and so I decided to put some blood leaking out of his mouth and splatter it on his apron. You want to remember that oxidized blood, blood that's been out for a while, has uh, started to coagulate, so you're going to need to add some, some black to it and make it a little bit more thick and sticky and hard so that it'll, it'll clump up a little bit more but yeah I just decided to go pretty pretty hog wild with it and got the Noblar's little hook there all clawed up and uh, he's all bloody so yeah, it's a lot of fun just don't want to get too overzealous Spooky Toberfest 2013 all wrapped up and here is my entry took me a couple nights working out a couple of hours a night but there it is and all its gory goodness scrag the slaughterer nom, 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 nom. um and his two little knoblar buddies thank you for watching hope you guys enjoyed it uh, i think i mentioned it somewhere in the video but the basing is going to be done by the client so i'm not going to worry too much about that just wanted to give a very basic uh, basing with some, some blood splatter and blood stains and stuff. Oh, to me a clear red. So evil, so good. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and hope you guys enjoyed this year's Spooky Toberfest comp not competition, uh, painting challenge. Hope you guys got uh, a lot more su subscribers and viewers to your channels, and found a lot more channels that you can enjoy um, following through uh, through through this little month-long thing. Thanks to all my participants and all the people out there who made it possible. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for participating. Some great stuff out there. Happy Halloween, everybody, and we'll see you in the next one. Latest players!